Now at 5.30 on WKYT this morning, the search is over for a Lexington native and her husband in Brussels. Her family says it's time for the healing to start. Also on WKYT this morning, a Laurel County mother and father are facing criminal abuse charges after police say they put their child in danger. What the father has to say about it from jail. And threats of a lawsuit in the Republican presidential race and more criticism over a controversial proposal to surveil Muslim neighborhoods. We're on the campaign trail ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Welcome in. It is your Monday, March 28th. We hope you had a nice weekend. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain, and I'm sure lots of candy out there for all the little kids, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hopefully some of it's still around. You know, they didn't eat it all yesterday. But, uh, you know, on the other hand, it's still around. I know, right? <laughs> you know? I brought some into the newsroom. I was like, i got to get this out yeah, of my house. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Let's check in meteorologist Micah Harris, keeping track of a week that will have its ups and downs. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of that candy, I have had about eight of those cad. Berry eggs, man, last week, man. It was disgusting, but I ate them. I love them so much. Defender Radar Network, there is your look. The rain's moving on out. Clouds still overhead, and what that does keeps us much cooler. Not only that, maybe even a little patchy drizzle as we head through the morning hours. 40s and 50s this morning. It's on the cool side of things, and it's basically going to stay there as we head throughout the afternoon. I believe the only difference there as we approach the afternoon from this morning is we may get some sunshine later on today. It all depends on that cloud deck. When it moves on out, will it break up? That's something to watch out for. And look at the temperatures tomorrow morning. Yeah, we're still going to be talking frost, at least some patchy frost here and there as we travel through the next several days. I'm going to go over that coming up in your forecast about 10 minutes. Okay, see you then, Micah. Thank you. It's the news a Kentucky family was hoping they would not have to hear. A Lexington native and her husband now confirmed dead in a terrorist attack at the Belgium, Belgium airport. Sad news that came over the weekend. Relatives of Stephanie and Justin Schultz are telling WKYT that instead of focusing on how they died, they're choosing to remember how the couple lived. And WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us live with reaction from the family. Mark? Good morning, Bill. The couple's families are now focusing on the love that Stephanie and Justin had for each other and the journey they were on in Europe. And what a journey. They traveled just about every weekend. They ran with the Bulls, visited the Vatican, and even stayed in an ice hotel. It was that spirit of adventure that their families are now remembering. They are not planning funerals for Stephanie and Justin yet because they're still waiting for their bodies to be returned. Stephanie was from Lexington. She met her husband while they were studying at Vanderbilt University. The couple had been missing since the explosions rocked Brussels Airport on Tuesday. They were waiting in the departure gate when suicide bombers set off two bombs. For days, their friends and family searched desperately trying to find them. Over the weekend, their search ended when they learned the couple did not survive the terror attacks. If not knowing for longer would have given them back to us, then let's go on not knowing. But if this was going to be the ultimate end, then let's, let's get this part done. Let the healing start. That healing can start now because, again, they're not focusing so much on the heartbreaking way that Stephanie and Justin died, but rather the incredible way that they lived. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, certainly uh, a lot of people will remember them back here uh, for those, uh, those sweet smiles and uh, certainly the lives that they lived. And that's what the family wants everybody to focus on. Our time this morning is 534, and we have a traffic alert for you this morning if you're traveling on Lexington's west side. One lane of Versailles Road will be shut down in both directions at New Circle Road beginning this morning. WKYT's Mike Byer joins us now with more on how long this closure will last. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michelle. Traffic is expected to be impacted today and tomorrow with the ongoing widening and reconstruction project here at the Versailles Road and New Circle Road interchange now beginning at 7 a.m. Uh, out the inbound and outbound left lanes of Versailles Road will be closed. This is due to the construction of the flyover ramp. These lanes won't reopen until tomorrow at 6 p.m. 
Then from 7 until 7 a.m. tomorrow, the right lane of the inner loop will be closed on the Versailles Road outbound ramp. Traffic will still have access to the ramp during this time. And lastly, beginning at 10 tonight, until 5 a.m. tomorrow, the ramp from the inner loop of New Circle Road to inbound Versailles Road will be closed. Now, during this time frame, a reduced speed limit of 45 miles per hour will be in effect. Officials are encouraging motorists to use a different route. However, they say if you must travel through this area, to use extreme caution. Now, these lane closures come at a good time with Fayette County Schools being on spring break, meaning there will be less traffic in this area than normal, especially during the morning rush hour. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Thank you, Mike. Now, in Laurel County, a mother and father face charges after police say they put their child in danger. Deputies found the couple passed out in their car in a stranger's driveway while one of their sons was asleep in the back seat. Dad, Joshua Grigsby, says he and his wife, Kayla, drove to pick up a friend who had been drinking. Deputies say the couple was under the influence of drugs. Grigsby admits he had used meth, smoked marijuana, and taken Percocet. He also says he regrets that decision. It's not worth it. It might be my thing plan in time or two, but it's not worth it. The couple is at the Laurel County Detention Center on multiple charges, including criminal abuse. Both have a $10,000 bond and are scheduled to be in court today. The Campbell County coroner has now identified the man who died after his car went off a bridge and into the Ohio River. The coroner says David James Booma from Milford, Ohio, died from severe head trauma. Booma's car went off of the Combs Hill Interstate 275 bridge during a crash earlier this month. Crews pulled his body and the car out of the river on Saturday. State transportation leaders have filed a petition to stop semis from driving on a busy Anderson County road. Now they say semis use Highway 151 as a shortcut. In the past year, police have dealt with five crashes involving semis on 151. Now to keep trucks off of it, state leaders are asking the Federal Highway Association to remove Highway 151 from the national truck network. Neighbors say semis sometimes end up in their yards. Trucks can uh, will come off the road there and. Go up through the yards. This highway was never designed for uh, the big trucks that are coming down the road right now. The state says every day more than 800 commercial vehicles travel Highway 151. In Louisville, police have charged a man with murder after he shot his girlfriend. Police say Stuart Cox shot 20 year old Tracy Brock at their home near the Jefferson Bullet County line. Friends of the two say they had been fighting, but they never expected it to escalate to that point. The shooting was a shock to neighbors. Never had any problems. I've been here since 2001. I've been in and out. I've rented the house out a couple of times and come back and no problems, no issues. So this is kind of like a, a big shocker. Kentucky State Police say Cox was arrested Friday morning after leading troopers on a high-speed chase through four counties. Cox crashed near Bowling Green and was taken back to Louisville. Police have not released a motive for the shooting. On the campaign trail today, threats of a lawsuit in the Republican race and more criticism over a controversial proposal to surveil Muslim neighborhoods. Meantime, Democrats are looking toward a showdown in Wisconsin. Don Champion has the latest on the campaign. Donald Trump is crying foul again, this time threatening a lawsuit over Ted Cruz trying to grab delegates in Louisiana. I won Louisiana, and now I hear he's trying to steal delegates. You know, welcome to uh, the Republican Party. What's going on in the Republican Party is a disgrace. Even though he narrowly lost to Trump in the state, Cruz's campaign has reportedly been trying to sway 10 more delegates his way, including some from former presidential candidate Marco Rubio. On the campaign trail, Cruz also faces more criticism for his proposal to patrol Muslim neighborhoods in the wake of the Brussels attacks. An idea he defended Sunday. What that looks like is proactive law enforcement. What that looks like is addressing the problem and engaging the problem. Rival John Kasich called such a move a knee jerk reaction. I don't even know how you would do it. And secondly, we can't be out there aggravating the very people whose cooperation we need. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders have dismissed the proposal. This week, Sanders will try to build on caucus victories in Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii over the weekend. We're doing extraordinarily well with young people. Uh, and we are, we think we do have a path toward victory. 
All of the candidates will campaign heavily in Wisconsin this week, where voters will head to the polls next Tuesday. Don Champion, CBS News. By the way, Sanders picked up 128 delegates over the weekend, but still trails Clinton in the delegate count by a wide margin. Illinois Senator Mark Kirk will meet with President Obama's Supreme Court nominee this week. Kirk's office says he will sit down with Judge Merrick Garland tomorrow. He will be the first Republican senator to have a face to face meeting with Garland. President Obama nominated Garland to fill the vacancy left after the recent death of Justice Antonin Scalia. But most GOP senators have been refused. Refusing to schedule confirmation hearings or to even meet with him. Kirk and two other GOP senators have recently called on their leaders to hold a vote on Garland. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is set to hold town halls in nine eastern Kentucky counties today and tomorrow. Senator Paul will hold a town hall in Rowan County at Moorhead State University at 12:15 today. He'll then go to Morgan County for a town hall at 2 this afternoon in West Liberty. Now, the senator will be visiting Boyd, Carter, McGoffin, Floyd, Breathitt, Harlan, and Whitley counties as well. All of the events are open to the public. The time is 5.41, and let's get our first check on traffic this morning. See what is going on with our live drive look right now at our traffic map, and you see lots of green, good to go. Now, we call your attention to that orange that you see over there near Keeneland, and that is because of the anticipated situation that we have going on throughout the day as they will be doing that work there, that flyover intersection there at New Circle Road at uh, Versailles Road. So that is uh, something that uh, we will keep an eye on this morning. 7 o'clock this morning is when it really gets rolling, but they're already staging for it uh, this morning. So anybody who has a flight out of Bluegrass Airport, take that uh, into account, uh, certainly as you travel. Yeah, it'll be one of those, <laughs> you know, hang-ups this morning, but yeah. thank goodness there's yeah. no school, right? It, that's right. Uh, spring break uh, helps out with the traffic flow. Still more news coming up for you Monday morning on WKYT. Alfred Hitchcock may have had the right idea when he made the movie Birds. Uh. In one neighborhood in Florida, is being terrorized by a group of hawks. That's ahead on WKYT This Morning. In the 40s and 50s this morning as that cooler air rushes on in for today and tomorrow, but then we jump it right back up toward midweek. I'm going to show you this roller coaster ride that we call spring coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Now we're getting the rain on out of here, and that's that front pushing on through. And the front pushing through does not mean we're going to have bright blue skies. What that means is some just cooler air is filtering on in. I want to show you this the milky clouds out and about as this low pressure system scoots across the Great Lakes. The wraparound moisture, remember, there's obviously water there in the Great Lakes, but that moisture, as these winds wrap around, it grabs that moisture and streams it down in, and that's why we have the clouds. Typically, as that front passes on through, and really, even if it's long gone, you can still have that wraparound moisture leading to that cloud deck overhead. But you can see a very distinct line going through there of Illinois and back toward Iowa and also uh, Missouri. Clear skies there, but it's when does this cloud deck move on out? As of right now, I'm leaning more toward afternoon and off into the evening hours. 49 now in Jackson. And what that cloud deck will do to us, it'll give us a little drizzle this morning, some patchy spots here and there. And not only that, but it'll keep these temperatures pretty cool. We're there in the 40s now. We'll finish off right around 50 degrees later on this afternoon. Then we hit Tuesday. Tuesday will actually be on the cool side, too. So today and tomorrow, still that cooler air settling on in. But watch what happens. These winds crank up out of the south and southwest, and you'll start to see these temperatures really get on up there as we travel towards your Wednesday. Wednesday will be pretty nice. I mean, we're talking temperatures upper 60s to around 70 degrees. So those gusty winds will move right back in 20, 30 miles per hour. This is pretty much the same setup as last week. Gusty winds, increase of temperatures, so average Tuesday, mild Wednesday, and then once we hit late Wednesday night off into Thursday, that's when things start to change. So here's 5 p.m. Wednesday, things look fine, right? Then we hit the evening and night, clouds will be on the increase and overnight, and into Thursday morning is when we really start to feel uh, that rain across the region. Here's 11 p.m. on Wednesday night. So before we hit midnight, we should start to see some rain slide in place. Then we go overnight into Thursday morning, and look how widespread it is. Thursday is no doubt about it, 100% the best chance of rain in your forecast. And it may be the only chance 
as we travel through the next seven days. There's not a great chance of rain uh, the next several days. So here's the look across the region on Thursday. You can see it's pretty widespread with showers and a few rumbles of thunder. None of that looks severe right now, but that's definitely something to watch, especially with the timing rolling in uh, during the morning hours, overnight Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That helps us out big time, stays away from the heating of the day. We'll be right around 70 degrees there on Thursday, and as the front passes through, guess what happens? We drop it right back down, 50s, 60s, some cooler air sliding on in, which those are close to average for this time of year. But we've been in the 60s and 70s, which makes us a little bit spoiled. We expect it now. It's just that's not what typically it is as yeah. we uh, travel through this time of year. It got really warm yesterday. Wasn't it you know? nice yeah, yesterday? It, really yeah, was. it was low to mid 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And day uh, the cloud cover kind of, you know, it wasn't Helped us out. all that hot. I'm right. still hung up on the fact that you ate eight Cadbury I know, eggs. Man. Take it over. The only reason why I can't count is because it's the two pack of four. You oh know? my yeah. goodness, my yeah. gut. So good. He that knows better. Gross. Tell me too much about that. I'll have him. Uh, yeah, he'll have John. me running around. Yeah. He's going to be at the gym after the show. Burn those calories off. All right, let's talk about the Hawks a little bit. Yeah. Spring Hill, Florida residents are keeping a close eye on the skies these days. Hawks are becoming a major nuance for the area. Now, the Hawks are dive bombing unsuspected residents. Uh, which they'll do, right? A sign now warns of the danger above, uh, but they nest in the tree, and the Hawks, for that matter, are not going anywhere. It's the second season in a row that Hawks have chosen this quiet street to make their home. Wildlife officials refuse to remove the protective parent hawks until nature runs its course. But uh, there's an issue. You know, you hear of them even picking up uh, small dogs and uh, oh my uh, other pets. <laughs> Never thought of that. <laughs> you know, so uh, I guess they, uh, you know, it's, it's a nuisance, but uh, I guess the other guy said it's nature as well there. So there yeah, you go. Got to run to your car every morning, right? Yep, yep. Got to get an umbrella, maybe. <laughs> <That> might <laughs> Don't work. attack me! <laughs> Oh, goodness. Coming up, you'll get the story making news at this hour. That's coming up on WKYT. Also, we'll check traffic again, see how things are moving along. We have some health news and what's hot on the web, and our top stories on the way on WKYT This Morning. Good morning. We're glad you're with us here on your Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. The time is right now 5.53. Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on at this hour. A Lexington native and her husband now confirmed dead in that terrorist attack at a Belgium airport. Relatives of Stephanie and Justin Schultz are telling WKYT that instead of focusing on the horrible way they died, they are choosing to remember how the couple lived. The families also say they are not planning funerals for Stephanie and Justin yet because they're still waiting for the bodies to be returned to the U.S. So babies are getting fewer ear infections than they did in the 80s and the 90s. And that's according to researchers at the University of Texas, where doctors say more breastfeeding, less exposure to tobacco smoke, and a rise in vaccine use have all contributed to that drop. Terminal cancer patients choosing to die at home may live longer. That's according to researchers in Japan who found that good hospice home care doesn't shorten life and may actually prolong survival. Let's get a check this hour on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. Traffic, a lot of green out there. So far, so good this morning. Now, remember, one lane of Versailles Road will be shut down in both directions at New Circle Road. So plan ahead if you're heading out that way this morning. Let's turn it over to Bill with a look on what's happening on the net. Well, on WKYT.com, we have all the latest, of course, this Lexington family coming to grips now with the reality that their loved ones were killed in the terrorist attacks in Belgium last week. Stephanie and Justin Schultz died in the blast at the Brussels airport. Family members wanting everyone to focus on how they lived and loved, and we're certainly uh, keeping that story updated as we learn new information and find out more about them and the lives they lived here in the U.S. and abroad. We're Following up after a woman wanted in Lexington was arrested in North Dakota. A 30 year old, Urelis Rios, is accused of embezzling thousands of dollars uh, in money from an apartment complex where she had worked in Lexington. So, uh, that story uh, ongoing this morning as she is now expected to be extradited back and appear in court. Also trending, the Kentucky Wildcat baseball team toppled Florida in a big upset Sunday afternoon. It took extra innings, but the Cats took the win. The Cats next play Northern Kentucky tomorrow. Uh, should be a fun game there. As you think about ways to spruce up your place inside and out, the 41st annual Central Kentucky Home and Garden Show will kick off later this week at Lexington Center. There will be ideas to help you get those projects done from the front door all the way to the backyard. On Kentucky.com this morning, a new estimate is out that climbers who come to Kentucky's beautiful Red River Gorge 
spend an estimated $3.6 million a year. Uh, they, of course, some of them uh, stay and, of course, eat, and uh, that money changes hands. It's certainly an important part of Kentucky's economy and tourism. And CBS This Morning is on the way with your eye opener and the latest from around the world. Plus, we'll have local updates. Join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. Yeah, and those clouds overhead is what is going to be the story this morning because that's going to hold temperatures down and also give us the patchy drizzle to work with. But the rain's long gone. I mean, it's on out of here. See you later. Goodbye. Temperatures in the 40s, so some cooler air filtering on in, and it just invades the state of Kentucky. Uh, and, and like I was talking about, this isn't a big shot at cold air. It's just much cooler than where we were this weekend. So we can we had 60s and 70s. It was extremely nice, and also the rain stayed out of the way. So once the rain pushed on out this morning, it's long gone through the day. Like I said, some patchy drizzle, but other than that, it's just cloudy and cool. Be roughly 50 degrees this afternoon. I mean, some locations, if you hold on to cloud cover all day long, you're talking about upper 40s. And then if you actually see bits and pieces of sunshine later on this afternoon off into the evening, yeah, we'll be in the uh, lower 50s. We'll talk about another jump of temperatures coming up with another hour of WKYT News. Downtown look at the pavilion. We'll see you back here in a couple of minutes.